Thank you very much for that. And now for the call and invocation, we'll switch to Cynthia, who will lead us in that. We gather this day, we gather this day drawn in by God's love for us, seeking renewal in our faith as individuals and as a church. May we open our hearts and our minds to perceive the Spirit's nearness, that we may know the blessing of God's grace and presence with us. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, you call us to be your church, and in the midst of that call, we find both blessing and challenge. Still, we know that you lay out the path that leads to fullness of life. Be with us this day as we gather as your people, and help us to appreciate anew the important questions of faith, not afraid to admit our doubts, not afraid to lift up those things that we do not understand. In Jesus' name we pray, the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Cynthia, for that. And now for our special music today, we have another um, wonderful clip that Brad has uh, culled from, from his archive, his treasure trove of choir clips. So we'll switch to that.
Great. Uh, thanks very much. And uh, it's wonderful to see the choir um, and uh, see the choir with such enthusiasm. So that's um, really it's a wonderful little piece that we that we can share and uh, look forward to the time when we are back together in the sanctuary and can have our choir together. Um, so thank you again to Brad for um, making sure that that got taped long ago. Probably have no, no idea how important it would be and how valuable it would be to have that available to bring into our worship now. So thank you. Our scripture for today is a familiar one, uh, Psalm 8. Um, I think it's a nice way of, sort of starting off our theme for the fall. Here are the words for Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all the sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Here ends our reading from scripture. May God bless us with understanding. Amen. We are about to embark on an ambitious journey or perhaps it is a foolish one, we will consider in the coming weeks and months, really, some of the biggest questions of our lives and certainly of our faith. Questions like, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Or, why does God allow good things to happen to bad people? Does God really hear my prayers? How do I know that God loves me? What happens to me when I die? These are big questions. Some of them hotly and heatedly debated for years and years, many inspiring long tomes of carefully designed theological argument and counter argument. And here I am taking one question at a time, one Sunday at a time, giving each about what, a 12 to 15 minute examination and consideration. Ambitious, maybe foolish, perhaps more so. Yet we will tackle these big questions. Preacher on the hot seat, to be sure. So let's begin at least with sort of a, a, a starting point, if you will. Um, I'll share what I believe or what I've come to believe or my best attempt at explaining what's in my head regarding these various important theological questions. Some of them, I'll admit, I feel like I can answer pretty easily, but others, not so much. But I will try to answer them in a way that will be helpful. When I was putting the series together, I turned to the Oversight Committee for a little help and guidance. One person thought that I should be careful about taking on subjects that might end up stepping on people's toes, getting a little too close to tightly held beliefs. I will very likely do that, but I don't think that's a very good reason not to go ahead. I would ask that you have an open mind and remember that even though I have a reasonably decent education and spend a good part of my job thinking about these topics, I don't know everything there is to know. While I'd like to think that I have some expertise, I'm not sure I would go so far as to claim that I'm an expert in much of anything. At the same time, if I don't at least occasionally step on your toes or make you a little uncomfortable, then I'm not doing my job, or at least not doing it very well. 
So today I want to get us off on the right foot and to ground us in a good place from which we can tackle such big and important questions. Questions that I find I'm, I am asked from time to time. If they are uttered out loud, they are usually uttered in a hushed tone in a private moment, as if the person asking sort of thinks that they're the only ones who possibly could have this question. Everyone else has the answer. But that's not true. So here we'll try to pull out these questions and put them, put them in a more public place, more communal place, even as we're still living in the midst of our online existence. When I'm thinking about the big questions of faith, I think it's a good idea to begin by stepping back a bit and trying to get a better look at the view to expand the perspective. Psalm 8 helps to set that tone very well. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? We are just one small part of a large universe. So I would also like to suggest that what we're doing this fall is not so much actually about finding answers to life's most difficult questions, but in exploring our faith, exploring these questions, thinking about them perhaps in new ways, considering our relationship with our creator and with each other, and what it means for us to continue to gather and to wonder not only at the grace and love we experience, but how we are called to share that with others. Faith ought not be boiled down to small answers, to big questions, but in broadening and expanding our sense of wonder at God's unfolding story and on our small part in that grand narrative. So let me offer sort of a little, um, and it's not really an example, but a, a little sort of way of sort of thinking about how we're going to be tackling some of these. And I'm going to sort of uh, go back to a television show that, well, I, I will say I loved, Joe loved, we, we watched all the time, and, that was, and perhaps a few of you did as well, Star Trek, The Next Generation. Lots of really great um, um, little object lessons, a little ways of sort of entering some of these subjects actually in, in that show. And in the very last episode of that television series, the wise captain, Jean-Luc Picard, played by Patrick Stewart, faces a profound predicament. In the midst of his beginning awareness of this developing problem that he can barely comprehend, he finds himself in the presence of a nemesis that has hounded him throughout the entire series a character known as Q. Q is a mischievous and seemingly omnipotent kind of being who, is, who claimed to be a representative of something called the Continuum. Now, you don't need to remember this part, but the Continuum was a group which basically watched human, humanity, and in particular, the crew of a Starship Enterprise. And its captain testing and pushing and sometimes being just plain annoying as they go about exploring the universe. Now in the series finale, the captain faces a paradox is not, and is on the brink of, that is on the brink of ruining the very beginnings of humanity. When he finally opens himself to the paradox and bravely makes decisions that seem completely ridiculous, he ends up saving all of humanity. In the final scene with Q, the captain asserts that he expects the testing of the continuum to be done and over with, finally, after facing and passing these many tests posed by Q and the continuum, that he and his crew ought to be left in peace. Q tells him that the trial is never over and that he must learn from this most recent experience and understand the significance of opening himself to the paradox. Q goes on to offer the following advice. And this is advice that I think is wise. 
advice that is affirming and life-giving and the advice that I think helps open us to consider these important questions. And that advice is this. The exploration that awaits you is not mapping stars and studying nebula, but in charting the unknown possibilities of existence. Now, we may not be about the business of mapping stars and mapping nebula, or doing much of anything beyond our earthly realm. But I think our lives of faith ought to be much more about exploration, about wonder, about thinking in a bigger way about who we are, who our creator is, and how we understand that relationship. Our faith ought to be much less about finding neat and tidy answers, even to our most mundane questions. This fall, we set out as explorers to take on these important questions, not only to get something in the way of some answers, but to consider how these questions may lead us deeper into our faith, may provide a deeper way of understanding, may draw us closer to God and to each other. So as we begin this journey, may God bless us with courage and with patience. Praise be to God. Amen. Our hymn today is Joyful, Joyful. You'll share it. Great. And thanks again to the Riverside Church for providing that uh, to be shared. And now it is time for a mission moment with uh, Warren and Christine away for their anniversary. Joel and Alice are going to take up, or Joel or Alice, I will take up uh, the mission moment for today. We're ready for you. There you go. Okay, I'll get my whole face in here. I've got, <laughs> got to see over all the people down at the bottom, which my wife moved there so they would not be in the way. Uh, anyways, uh, Christine always does a wonderful job of connecting the mission moment to the sermon. I'm not so good at that. Uh, but basically, this is uh, one of the things that we are constantly having to, uh, to reach out to people in the community to, to do. And uh, you know, in that way, it is sort of like some of the issues that uh, uh, Reverend uh, Reichert was talking about. Uh, this is about food insecurity, and uh, this is an especially serious time as so many people are out of work due to uh, uh, the economic shutdown caused by the pandemic. Uh, lots of people are in really difficult straits, and food insecurity continues to be a really serious problem. Uh, we're hoping that you will be generous in uh, giving to this particular offering so we can uh, help people in our community. We're planning to uh, uh, probably divide this between uh, the Hollowell Food Bank uh, and the uh, uh, Wooden Shepherd uh, Food Bank, which basically acts as a, a repository uh, for material for all sorts of food products for a wide variety of uh, food banks across the state. So uh, we hope you will be generous and uh, uh, we thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much, Joel, for highlighting our mission uh, for this month. Uh, food insecurity is indeed a very important issue. You've probably read about it in the newspapers. If you have been reading the local paper, it is definitely an issue a widespread issue, but certainly also um, in central Maine. We hope that you will continue to support uh, the life and ministry and work of Old South Church. You may do so by dropping a check off at the church office or mailing one to the church office or directly to Wendy at home. Um, if you wish to give to the, the mission project, just make sure you write mission on the memo line. 
And as well, if you would like to give using a credit card, you can do so through the main conference, United Church of Christ. They are handling all credit card payments, uh, but you can find a link to that on our webpage. And we do thank you for your support and encouragement um, in the work that we are doing and in the ministry we are trying to live out. And now it is time to gather around the communion table um, as we have been doing um, uh, ever since we sort of moved to our online format. So I hope that you have um, something with you, a piece of bread or a cracker or something like that, and then some kind of beverage, uh, juice, coffee, even water, it doesn't matter. And there will come a time um, after I will do the invitation and a prayer and then a time when we will consecrate these elements together and we'll ask that you hold them and, and um, recite a couple of pieces um, after me. So um, I do invite you uh, to gather around this table, around this sacred table, and especially um, as we mark the beginning of um, our journey into thinking about our big questions, that we bring them to this place as well, that we think expansively and that we open our hearts and our minds for the presence of Christ. So let me invite you to the table with these words. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on that same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about Christ's table. This table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation for the gift, and for the gift of life, and for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice in a perfect victory over the grave. You raise Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, O God, and broke the bread and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I would invite you now to take your bread and cup and place your hands over them or hold them and repeat these words after me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and cup these gifts of bread and cup and bless us that as we receive them and bless us that as we receive them we may offer you our faith and our praise we may offer you our faith and our praise we may be united with christ we may be united with christ and with one another and with one another and may continue faithful in all things and may continue faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, in the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God. We offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. And give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Amen. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks for it, blessed it, shared it with them. And in the breaking of this bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ, the new life Christ gives. Now take these elements 
and silently pray as we listen to a short piece that Brad uh, prepared in advance. <laughs> Let us pray. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Be with us, O oh God, and help us to hear your voice and to feel and know your spirit. Instill in us a new sense of hope and peace that we might be strengthened and renewed in your service. Come into our lives, we pray, and enliven our understanding of hope and the joy of your calling. This day, we lift up our joys and concerns into your care. We pray for your comfort and your hope to be with all people who are suffering, suffering physically, spiritually, or emotionally those who are grieving or in distress, those who are feeling lonely, confused, isolated. Fill us all with your grace, O oh God, so that we might ourselves convey your love and your hope to others, especially to those who have lost their way. This day, we also lift up our joys and our hopes. We thank you, O oh God, for this community of faith these people with whom we share our journeys of life and faith. We thank you, O oh God, for the small glimpses of your glory that we experience in our personal lives as well as our lives in this gathered community. This day, we lift up into your care, O oh God, those who continue to work so tirelessly on the front lines of this pandemic. And we also lift up those whose lives have been upended by natural disaster. We are especially thinking today of the fires in the western areas of this country. We pray for first responders and for families and friends of those who are missing or who have died. We pray for your strength, O oh God, as we travel along this difficult road of life and faith. Grant us grace and courage. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, our friend and our guide our teacher, and our savior. 
Amen. Oh, my page fell over. Okay, so is that working? Yes, good. <clears throat> And now as we come to the end of our service today, I would ask you to just open your hearts to hear this blessing, that you will find ways of moving into this week, sharing love and hope, strength and blessing and grace. God who has given you rest and peace will go with you as you leave this place as you leave this worship feel the healing love of god in your life and bring the good news of god's love to all whom you meet go in peace amen